Alright everyone, so today I want to show you how to install a mortise lock. These are a pretty bulky unit and they are called a mortise lock because it's a lock that lives inside of a mortise. Now we've got to drill and chisel out a big pocket in the side of the door here and that's going to create our mortise. We'll slot this in, house the cover plate in, chuck the handles on it, chuck the lock in it and then chuck the cover plate on the uh, door jamb. So first of all you want to mark out your height for your handle which is this hole here and then we've got our lock now these actually these specific ones that I've got are a bit counterintuitive to me I would have thought they'd go in this way but they actually go in the opposite way to what I think so the lock is actually below the handle the um, assembly is only going to rotate one way so it'll go up like this but it won't go down which means we've got to flip it and that way when we use our handle they're actually being used in the right direction. Now your kit should come with a diagram and basically that gives you a bunch of measurements to tell you where to drill your holes and things like that. Our handles in this house are at a meter off the ground so we start with that mark and then we work our way upwards and downwards to to calculate the rest of the marks based on the information that's given. So we'll start off with our line for our handle height, square that across on all of the faces of the door and then we can measure upwards and downwards. So my instructions tell me to go 55 mil up. That's the top of the mortise. The whole mortise is 175. So there's our bottom of the mortise. And then from the bottom of the mortise, we can come up 34 mil and 17 mil. And that's the mark for our two holes for our lock, our door handle, and then the top and bottom of the pocket that we're gonna drill out. So we'll square them off. Now I just set my square to 60 mil, so that'll be the center line of our holes for our lock and handle. And I'll just circle those points, and then we want to mark our holes for our screws that hold the handle on. So 40 mil and 80 mil. Now we want to find the thickness of our mortise lock, and we want to find a drill bit to suit that thickness. And it can't be wider than the cover plate at the front but wide enough so that the, uh, the lock will slide into its hole. Now we can use two different types of drill bits. We can use a Forstner bit, which is this one, or a spade bit. Spade bits are a lot cheaper, uh, and I only have the right size in a spade bit, so that's what I'll be using. And I've got a bit of tape here to mark the depth of how far I want to drill this piece into the door, because if I go too deep, I'll drill all the way through the timber and hit the glass, and we don't want to be doing that. Now lastly, we want a center line in the middle of the door so that way we can aim our spade bit on that line. So I like to set my square to halfway and then mark it from the other direction. Now sometimes you'll get it bang on the middle, sometimes you'll end up with two lines that are slightly apart. That can happen because of your pencil thickness or, or whatever. The point is if you do end up with two lines, halfway between those lines is the middle and that's where we'll aim to drill. Now this is pretty time consuming, so don't get impatient. You just want to make sure you get this part right. So get comfy and um, start drilling it out. And then once you've drilled as much as you can, you've got to start using a chisel after that. All right, we've got our mortise done. We can give it a test fit. Just keep test fitting it until it fits. And you want to make sure it's nice and parallel with the door. Once your height's right, once it's parallel, we can trace this cover plate with a knife. It's much more accurate than using a pencil and it gives you a head start with your chiseling. Now you want to be careful when you're chiseling away these little thin pieces here. You can actually split the timber and blow the door out a bit. Once again, just take it nice and slow. Now you want to be careful chiseling across ways. Like I said, you can blow out the sides of the door. So you're better off just running up and down and following your knife mark. Now I've just made that knife cut a bit deeper and so the chisel will follow that a lot better.
Now we just keep checking that the depth is right. We can put our mortise lock in and out, but it's always good to just check as you go. Now if your hammer's in good condition, you can use the base of it just to tap it in and it won't mark anything up. And there we go, that's housed in. We can put our two screws in at the top now. Now there are two different length screws. There are two long ones and three short ones. The shorter ones are generally for the striker plate, the longer one are for the mortise lock. So. I always like to do these with a hand screwdriver because you may over tighten it with a drill and then the timber will be ruined and you'll have nothing to screw to. And now we're ready to put our handles together. So we put our spindle in, and then we put our screws. Now because these are actually more of a bolt, they come segmented uh, and you can cut these with pliers to the appropriate length depending on how thick your door is. Now the screw part has a Phillips head and this is just a captive nut. I like to put these on the outside, that way you can't have someone disassemble your handle from externally, it just makes it more secure. Alright, I've got my holes drilled, I'll just peel this masking tape off. Alright, that masking tape's just there so I don't scratch it, especially when I'm trying to tighten up these screws. Now next up is our lock. There's a hole in the side here and a long bolt. You just want to make sure your handle returns on its own uh, and you also want to check that your key works. Alright, I just had to buzz this door down a little bit to get it to actually close. Now that it is closing, what you want to do is get a sharp pencil and just mark where this piece hits the jam. Now the next important piece of the puzzle is to get a measurement from the back edge of this flat part on the tongue or the latch as it's known. We've got 12 millimetres. Now we come over to our jam and where we've made our two little square marks we mark that 12 millimetre measurement and we line this hole up. That front edge of this hole goes to that 12 millimetre mark and then we just centre it to those square lines. And then we just make sure it's parallel with the door jam and trace the whole thing. I just pre-drilled my screw holes. Now that we need to check out for those strikers. Now we can chisel these out into a nice square hole. Now this piece here is just to make those holes look a bit better once everything's installed. So you want to make sure it fits. All right, now that that's in, we can get our striker plate recessed in, which is this part. It doesn't have to be too deep, so just take it nice and easy. All right, the last thing to do is just check the door, make sure it operates as normal. You don't want it to be too tight or too loose, you don't want it to rattle, but you also don't want it to be impossible to close. 
All right, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Uh, as always, feel free to like and share the videos. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And this video is a part of a build series that I'm doing, so if you want to check that out, go ahead. I'm pretty much making over this entire house, so I bring you along for that process. So if that sounds like something that might interest you, feel free to check that out as well. Thanks for watching.